Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where despite today's atrocious weather, we have a very exciting video in store. I've brought my BMW M5 back to its birthplace. I'm visiting the BMW plant in Dinglefing where they build the 5 Series, 6 Series, 7 Series and in future the 8 Series because we're going to explore the processes and the assembly plant to see how the M5 is built. I've been getting to know this fantastic car over the last couple of months, the Donington Grey F90 M5. It's a car from BMW M and as such I've joined them for various different driving events and experiences from picking up the car in the first place at the BMW Velt in Munich to then going to the Nürburgring 24 hour race, the 24 hours of Le Mans and more recently to the BMW Driving Academy not too far away from here in Maisac to play around more with the MX Drive, the four wheel drive system that you can switch to entirely rear wheel drive for some smoky burnouts and drifting fun. The last update was a visit to BMW M to the M studio to install various performance parts and some individual customizations. So the carbon fiber kidney grills at the front, the aero inserts, the side skirts, the air breather at the side, the lip spoiler at the back and the diffuser, as well as two custom Shmi 150 parts on the inside of the car. But today we're at the next chapter of the story, visiting where it was built at the BMW Werk Dingle thing. This was the second ever BMW factory, but it is one of the largest, in fact the largest in Europe. They employ 17 and a half thousand people here and they have actually built in its entire history 10 million cars in total. They're building 400,000 a year. This was one of them. But let's go inside and take a look around. Behind me is where the journey for the M5 through the assembly plant will have begun. So the painted body shells arrive here and they're separated out into two different lines. You have the high runner line, which is cars with three cylinder, four cylinder or six cylinder engines. And then you have the area where we're exploring, which is where cars like the M5, in future the new 8 series, also the M760 Li with its V12 are built. So you can see we have a line of shells here. We've got an extended 7 series, 5 series, a long wheelbase 7, 5 different shells in different colours all here and they each have these boxes on the bonnet which are programmed with the specifics for that exact car. So that will contain the information about the VIN, the specification, the region, whether it's left hand drive, right hand drive, the different options that it's actually going to have later on down the line. So that can all be checked. Now naturally components arrive literally in time for installation. It's all planned about a week ahead. But this is where the journey began. The M5 will literally have been right here, ready to go onto the assembly line. Arriving right now is a Snapper Rocks blue M5 body shell. So you can see the intake vents on the side fenders that you have there, but the reader was determining exactly which car it is and when it's going to go onto the line. This is one of the few robot stages in here where the vehicle gets its unique identification number. So it's milled into the bodywork and that number will stay with it for the whole of its life. The production line actually starts with disassembly. So this is a Marina Bay Blue M5, but the first thing that's going to be done to it actually is that the doors are going to be taken off, which will help assembly because then there are no obstructions to get in and out of the car and get access. The very first parts that actually go on the car are the shock absorbers. So here you can see the different variety that we've got for the 5 Series, for example, the regular shock and those with electronic damper control. And then on this side, the air suspension for the 7 Series. So these arrive literally on time, as we've said, everything coming to the line to be installed and fitted. So that is the first part that goes onto the body shell. So you can see, it's now without its doors. You can easily spot the ones for an M5 because the shocks are from aluminium. We're doing a good job of finding 5 Series. We've got a G30 here, which is about to have its wiring loom installed. So about four and a half kilometers of wiring cover the entire car and all of its electronics. That's lifted up using the handling tool and literally placed right inside the car. So if it was a 7 Series fully loaded with all the technology, that would be about 40 or 50 kilos. So it's important, obviously, for the workers that they have the assistance to manage to lift it up. But then it all gets spread out and put into place. The empty bags then go back towards the suppliers as we'll stack back up here as are the other parts that hold the wiring looms in place. Those go back to base and are used for the next set of cars. Right here coming around, we have a Donington Grey M5, or the early start of a Donington Grey M5. And in fact, if you just come through and have a quick look here, you can see which side has the opening. This is gonna be a right-hand drive car. So the wiring loom has been put slightly more into place. You have the seat attachment going on down here. You can see the pedals are in, or the brake pedal is in there for the right-hand drive steering column, which makes about 12% of the total production from the Dingle Fink plant. 
right hand drive as opposed to 88% of the left hand drive. The cars are rotated onto their sides to make access a little bit easier but you can spot the M5 from its carbon roof. At this stage it gets the antenna installed as well as some parts on the rear parcel shelf It's also had the tail lights fitted. If we just come through to have a look at the other side you can see the underbody of the car too which is again getting some parts installed also. You can tell an M5 on this stage because it has the intakes here which cool the rear silencer. But it's not every day you get to see this much detail of the underbody of a BMW M5. On this car the fuel tanks have been installed but we also have the 530e, so the hybrid car, which has a different fuel tank installed just there. This area is kept for the high voltage battery, and then you can see the cabling that goes from that in the background. You can spot the colours from BMW Individual coming through. This is an M5 in Santorini blue. To get an idea of the scale of this plant, it's over three different floors. There are a lot of things happening everywhere. It extends all the way down in that direction with different things going on. But you can imagine, to build the number of cars that they are building here, 10 million over the history of the plant, 1,600 per day, almost 400,000 cars a year. That is a serious, serious number of cars. It's actually amazing to see almost how clean and tidy the location is as well. But everything coming through, sliding around, moving to the next stages, the different models as well. The swapping around, you can just hear all of the different machinery around us. We have now arrived at one of the most exciting stages of this entire process, and conveniently, we have an M5 competition that is about to go through the marriage, the moment of the wedding when the underpinnings are met with the body. So, all the different components are installed into the body now, but beneath it, we have the engine, the gearbox, and the drivetrain. So, the M5 has the MX drive system, which is the parts that you can see at the back here. So, there's a drivetrain towards the rear, there's also a drivetrain on the other side that leads towards the front but it's the 4.4 litre twin power turbocharged v8 that makes 600 horsepower there is the drivetrain that goes towards the front i've had a lot of fun playing with the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive systems but this is the moment of marriage when it goes up and all the different contact points have to meet perfectly to ensure that it just slots very neatly straight into place and then we have the moment of marriage where it can all be attached all the cables connected and that's it in place the car has been married However you exactly described that, that's happened now on the line. So you've got the different models, the 5 Series, the 7 Series we can spot from its air suspension shocks that you have uh, for the front axle, the rear shocks having already been installed. All the cars arriving from their two separate lines, and if we come just quickly here, this is the system that happens just before, where trip cameras, very clever technology, are looking to make sure that there's nothing loose hanging that could be causing an obstruction when it then gets actually to be mounted inside the body shell just up here. So that's all attached. You can see the very large brake discs on the M5 competition. And onwards it goes towards the next step. The car will go next to get its face. So it will have the lights, the grille and the bumpers installed. We can catch a quick glimpse of the underside as it goes past us. And then the base that the powertrain was being stored on will now be taken around to house the next setup and then loop back around for another marriage later on. Just in time, the bumpers have arrived from the level above us. They get mounted onto this jig, which will prepare them for the next car that is going to be here on the line. But this is quite literally the headlights, the grill, and everything for the front end on a jig that can then be placed directly onto the car. So just over this side, you can see that the next Marina Bay Blue M5 is arriving with us. All the final preparations to make sure that this can literally be put straight onto the car. This is manoeuvred into place and then almost held there while the car comes along the line and everything lines up absolutely perfectly. On it goes, gets screwed in, gets mounted in properly. That's such a smooth process, so simple, so easy with all the right equipment to do it. And then everything fully bolted in and tightened up. And there we have the front of the M5 as mine was originally with the chrome around the kidney grills that have now been changed to the M performance parts. Huge amounts of opening for cooling, the radiator that's now tucked in behind and the engine the lurks there inside the engine bay. While the cars are in the air we can also see some of the aerodynamic features. So this is called the air curtain where you can literally see that air can come straight through and is directed around the side of the car and also at the back of the front wheel well where you can imagine at speed air would be building up. It has the air breather where air can escape and again is directed down the side. The equipment here for the wheels is very special, so they come through this system, delivered one at a time, then they are used on this frame and jig taken to the car to be put in place. Then you have this hydraulic system that will put itself, or be put onto the uh, locking wheel nuts to be tightened up and torqued up. One on each side, one system on each side. 
front wheels, rear wheels, front wheels of the next car, rear wheels. And that will automatically do its thing, just to torque and tighten everything up. So at the moment the car doesn't actually have any fluids in it either, so that's done at the next stage. The uh, protection bar there just put onto the side, the black gloss bar that you have down the side, especially on the blue Velvet 7 that we're looking at here. But the next wheel arrived, it's put on the jig. The jig is then taken to the back of the car. On it goes to minimize the lifting work required and then it gets tightened up. The next pretty significant step in the process is when the car is lowered down onto the ground. So you can see that the machines are just maneuvering it here so that it can go down onto some lower uh, struts to take the weight and it's released from the upper mechanism that's been carrying it the entire length of the journey so far. When that's been removed and taken away, the car will lower itself down to the ground. And that is the moment that it is sitting on its own four wheels on the ground, ready to continue the roll through. As well as the BMW cars and the M cars, we also have an Alpina. So the Alpinas are built here at Dinglefing, come down the production line as per other models. This is a B7 based on the G12 7 series. It's pretty distinctive in the Alpina blue, a heritage color from them with the multi-spoke wheels. But this car has the 4.4 liter V8, makes 608 horsepower. You can see there's an Alpina badge there worn on the plaque over the top of the engine bay. This car is now at the fueling stage, so the cars get connected up, get some fuel inside them ready for uh, their first ever startup. I didn't actually realize that the Alpinas were built here also. Nice to see. We're right at the end of the line where conveniently an M5 competition is about to have its very first ever start. Let's head around to the back and hear it firing up and coming into life for the first ever time. And there we go, the V8 burbles and now it will be able to drive off and head towards the further stages under its own power. Off the end of the line it goes. And while it's on its way, the extractor fans are retracting also, ready for the next car and the line to continue through. That car then comes straight to wheel alignment. You can see the lasers and the light show going on on the wheels just to make sure it's fine tuned and completely precise. It will also have the headlights adjusted and then it will be going on its way. We can also see the machine for the headlight adjustment that just checks that they're pointed at exactly the right height and direction. The monitor up ahead is providing instructions to the driver, including doing some brake testing as well on the final parts of the rolling road. The car now heads towards its driving assistance systems checks, so to run through all the technology that it has onto the rolling road to give it a small run to see how it drives, and then it will head onwards to be shipped off to a dealer and eventually towards its customer. Well, I'm not going to lie, today's weather has been horrendous and it is not exactly getting any better now either, as you can probably tell from the noise of the raindrops tapping away on the carbon fibre roof. So needless to say, I am rather relieved that I've been filming indoors in the dry of the factory and now I'm sat back in the warmth of the M five ready to continue my adventures this evening although with the rainfall here in Bavaria I don't exactly think there are going to be any Autobahn VMAX runs going on so this car has now done 12,000 kilometers it had 3,000 kilometers when I picked it up so fair to say it's being used an awful lot the last visit was to go to BMW individual for the installation of this new dashboard plate that we have here the trim in carbon fiber with the laser etched Schmi 150 logo that we also have on the door sills here the tread plates all four of them, front and rear, also have the Shmi 150 logo on them, as well as the M Performance parts on the exterior. And all of that is about experiencing the whole story behind a car like this, what it's like to use and experience more behind BMW. So the individualization of it, coming here today to see the factory and share with you what it's like seeing a car like this actually being built, but also going to the different events, and basically taking in the whole lifestyle of BMW M. As they call it, M is the most significant letter in the world for good reason. It really gets you and the passion of the brand is just incredible. So I'm enjoying absolutely everything. Today's been great to explore the factory in Dingle Thing. So a big thanks to the guys that organized that and arranged it and made it possible. And thank you, of course, to you guys as well for watching. I hope you continue to enjoy these videos with the BMW M5. So thanks again, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.